Welcome to Star Trek Redemption. I believe this is episode 10. Um, here we go. The plan to salvage parts on the Class M planet inhabited by wayward Vulcans has only led to the loss of two more crew, including Lieutenant Cantrell, who is MIA. With very little to show for their actions, the USS Saturn has begun to look into the data recovered from Sorak, but such an analysis will take time. With the ship still very badly damaged, and the crew morale at an all-time low, any fortunate turn of events would be welcome, no matter how minor. Okay. We switch to the bridge. Or not the bridge, the ready room. Where Commander Verma is currently. Uh, it is uh, a couple days after the events from the last episode. And go ahead and take it away, Zypher. Commander Verma sits at the captain's desk in the ready room. Reading department damage reports. The list of malfunctions scrolls on the screen. Eventually he gets the report he was not looking forward to reading. It's the casualty report from Dr. Kaiser. Verma closes his eyes as his head drops down to his chest. He sits defeated in his chair as he completes reading the doctor's report. He turns the screen off. Computer. Captain's personal log. This is happening again. My efforts and decisions are costing lives. I cannot see a way out of this predicament. For every subsystem that is operational, two others are not. My crew is stretched thin, working around the clock. They barely have time to heal from the wounds and the action we have seen. I worry for their strength. I worry that the days to come not going to break them. They are young and experienced. Is this what the Kobayashi Maru test was intended to teach us? Facing fear in the certainty of death? Ah. Computer pause. Verma sits there, kind of head back, lost in thought. Computer resume. It seems maybe this is what my father wanted me to understand. Understand stoicism, understand its virtue that we need to achieve. Not the fear of death, not the fear of pain, but duty, dharma. Maybe that is my purpose here. It is strange, a disgraced commander at the helm of this ship was tasked with this mission. Is the senior most ranking officer now? Is this my redemption?
I do not know. But I do know this. I do know that every Warpa who has captained the Shah Sin has brought the ships back home. And I'm not going to break that line and I'm not going to break that promise. Verma looks around at the room, kind of in his mind projecting what the ship looks like out in space. We will get you home. We will fix you. Computer and personal log. Commander Verma sits back in his chair, fingers crossed. Chin resting on them, continuing in deep thought. And I'm done. Okay. As Verma is done with his personal log, the scene switches slowly over to the astrogation lab where Lieutenant Tala is busy at work. And Tala has the last few days. She hasn't slept. She's just kept going and going. She knows approximately how long she can go before her body gives out. Most she's went is about 10 days so far. She has decided to keep pushing as much as she can until she knows she can't continue before she rests. Luckily for her, it's not difficult for Vulcans to spend much time without sleep, but the human part of her, she knows is slightly weaker in that aspect. She combs through the data that Sarek left them, finding a different way home, a wormhole of sorts. She pours through the data, trying to get as much data as possible, trying to extrapolate as many variables, anything that could go wrong, anything that can go right, whatever might happen and whatever might not happen. Trying to analyze it, see what the best course of action would be. And as far as she has been able to tell, this will be it. She didn't want to disappoint Commander Verma again. She didn't want to disappoint the crew again. She feels, well, she knows that she should have argued more against the protections of Verma, wanting to keep her on the ship when she could have been down on the planet, excavating and taking technology. If she had only argued further, pushed, maybe she could have been down there, maybe they could have gotten something, maybe others didn't have to die. Tala always had this feeling she didn't originally want to be on her mother's ship. She knew once the crew learned of her heritage of her being the captain's daughter, it'd be the same as when she was growing up, being treated differently. Maybe for another reason this time, instead of being partially human on a Vulcan planet, being a Vulcan on a hum primarily human ship, and being the captain's daughter, there were going to be certain aspects that, uh, certain ways that she would have been treated. Tala always wanted to be treated for her actions, not her heritage. And though there was 
some frustrations for her for coming on the ship, being with her mother. There is somewhat regret for not spending more time with her over the years, thinking that this is the only way that she could spend time with Tala. And now, with all the avoision, with not spending any time with her, she was now gone. And Tala could not get that time back. All she could do now was move forward. Unfortunately, she did not have anyone else here to mourn with. Didn't have time to take, to think. It was all about getting ship up and running, getting everyone home. Though these thoughts of finally getting back drove to lot. There was a slight slowdown in her mental faculties, thinking about her mother, thinking about Kruger, her one and only friend who didn't treat her like a Vulcan, didn't treat her like a human, but just treated her like an individual. And that she did not think she could get back. But for now, she pours over the data, continuing to work. And that's it. Can you give me a um, reason science role? Sure. Uh, difficulty one. Uh, would I have a focus in this? <laughs> Um, I'd have to look at your folk guy. Um, Astrophysics, astronomy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Generated one momentum. Okay. Uh, we'll come back to that later. Uh, the scene watches us over. Sh Tala's shoulder as she's punching at a console and moves to sick bay where Lieutenant Quick has been for um, the last couple of days and Dr. Kaiser is attending to him. Go ahead, uh, Quick first. So Quick uh, lays in the bed deep in thought. Uh, thinking about the mission uh, he's been visibly upset with himself and mentally and physically uh, beaten up by the whole uh, mission and uh, he's thinking about home back in Montana I was always out to prove myself when my mother died in the Battle of Narendra. I always felt like I had to go out, go out as great as she did. I failed to protect Tala and fight off the enemy. If I had, we could have completed our task and gotten away with some good salvage. He thinks about what his father is doing right now. Perhaps he's still trying to kiss the ass of his higher ranking officer and he kind of virtually slaps himself for the thought I can't blame him for anything it's not his fault it's my own so many men and women try to blame their fathers for their misguided steps no I don't want to do that my faults are my own doing I respect my crew Respect Commander Verma, Lieutenant La, the Doc, even those that died. He thinks fondly about his grandfather out in the field on the farm, shooting bottles of pop on the fence in the summer, chasing the horses in the barn. 
Tala fought well, much better than I did. I need to make it up to everybody. And that's about it for him. Okay. Lieutenant Kaiser, you walk up to Lieutenant Quick, um, laying in uh, his bed. He's been antsy the last day or so to get up. And uh, this would be the final uh, checkup. Um, Dr. Kaiser walks over and looks at Quick. How are you feeling today, Lieutenant? Any better? I'm I'm good. I'm ready to go. Get uh, get back in training. You can tell he's obviously exaggerating, but excited to get up. Well, obvious exaggerations aside, I think you'll be in good enough shape to return to regular duties. Just don't do anything too crazy. I'm just going to do a few checkups on you here, physical, mental health. Um, then uh, I expect this should be the last one. We should be able to discharge you. Go ahead and just do a few check, uh, tests here. Excellent, excellent. I'm just going to run routine Yep, just tests. go ahead and give me a uh, medicine um, reason. Difficulty one. I don't imagine any focuses because this is just regular checkup. Yeah, just regular checkup. Okay. okay. Generated one momentum. Uh, yeah, he seems uh, fit for duty. Um, he's going to be a little stiff and sore for a while, but probably getting up and moving about's best for him at this point. Yeah. Kaiser looks it over and. Well, physically, everything seems to be fine. No abnormalities in the mental patterns either, but you know, stress is an everyday part of life, so some of that wouldn't necessarily show. You have a clean bill of health, but I want to remind you, Lieutenant Quick, and know that you likely saw some difficult things down there. I don't have the greatest training for it. It was another uh, who was the um, side psychiatrist on board, but I do have some measure of expertise in, uh, as a counselor, if you require it, so don't hesitate if you have anything you wish to discuss. He looks um, like a little slightly embarrassed and everything when he uh, rubs, rubs his jaw, one of his hands, and uh, he's like, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'll be good, uh, Doc, thanks, thanks, uh, you're doing a, you're doing a great job. You know, I don't know. Uh, I'm not, I know you're handling a lot by yourself. You, you're doing a great job, though. Oh, not alone. He looks over his shoulder as D Nurse Davidson comes in. But thank you. Do what we can despite being short staffed. She actually, when you say her name, she looks over at you and nods slightly. Uh, doctor, the uh, other patient that you were wanting to see, the Vulcan, uh, she's uh, woken up. Hmm. All right, then. Well, um, Lieutenant, again, you're free to go. I'm going to continue tending to things here. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Annie. He, he kind of looks over to Nurse Davidson... Gives her an awkward smile, and uh, he says, uh, nurse. Lieutenant. She doesn't give you really much facial expression, a very quick smile. Looks back to Lieutenant Kaiser. Yeah, and he will proceed to head that way. Okay. Uh, she will walk out the door. Uh, you guys can follow us with your tokens if you'd like. As they're walking along, um, he's asked Nurse Davidson a couple quick questions. Does she appear to be in any kind of elevated emotional state? Anything that you could discern? Oh, she... And so let me ask you, have you given her the antidote yet? 
Of course. Yeah. yeah as soon as as soon as it was synthesized, it would have given it to him. Yeah. Uh, no, not yet. Uh, she is just coming out of her coma, however, so um, she could still be dr- groggy from the medications. Mm. All right. I don't think there'll be a need to refer restraints. I imagine that she's going to be feeling a lot better once we've. Well, once the grogginess wears off, I think you should be back in balance if that medicine does its work. Yes, okay. I have her scans up on the monitor for you. And she walks over and punches a few buttons. Um, It displays over her bed, her uh, neural pathways and everything. You notice the first thing that um, they are uh, not they're actually not um, any better, perhaps, but they're certainly no worse. You're not sure what that means? Did we lose somebody? We did. Oh, We oh. lost a whole rogue. Brown out. Yeah, let's just keep going since he's not missing. Yep. Um, and she uh, just waits for you to interpret those or anything. Terrell on the bed seems to be waking up. She her eyes are fluttering, her facial muscles are twitching, uh, that sort of thing. Mm. Just out of character, is this supposed to fix like any kind of neural degradation that's already taken place, like advanced, or is it just supposed to keep it from worsening? Well, it it could or... it could do both. Um, it it might. Um, what you're seeing on your scanner might not be indicative to her emotional state. Um, just her, um, well quote-unquote brain damage um definitely the um you know the neural pathways um are um well why don't you give me a a reason medicine roll difficulty two you have two momentum in the pool i'll use one um i don't think i have any applicable focuses for it so would be three mm-hmm. dice. One second. I'll take that threat. Um, you're unsure exactly. Um, it definitely isn't any, it's not going to get any worse, but you're not sure of her emotional state. Um, you're not sure if she was too far along, um, or if the uh, cure actually helped at all. Uh, you think it did, but you weren't on the planet to see the outcome, so hard to tell. So he kind of scratches his chin a bit, and looks at the nurse. Thank you for this, nurse. Is there and out of character as well? Would I know? Were there any other patients in here that require tending or anything like that? Oh, there's there probably is minor injuries around the ship that uh, you guys have been working 24-7 on a bunch of junk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, he would look at it and... Um, I'll go ahead and handle this, nurse. If you want to take another break to go ahead and do so now and um, report back in maybe another hour, hour and a half. She nods and... Very well, sir. And she turns around and walks by you and heads out um, leaving you there alone um, a few minutes after she leaves and you're looking over some scans Terrell sits up and looks around a bit wide eyed um, yeah and Kaiser ah you woke up Good. And he goes to kind of grab like a nearby chair or something to sit next to where she's at. You're in our med bay. No need to be concerned. You remember who I am? Uh, you're the doctor. The human doctor. Right. My name's Dr. Kaiser. And, uh, well, we... I believe we administered a, what is be a cure for your Benoist syndrome. How are you feeling? I feel 
very groggy, but uh, I don't... I remember how I felt before. I was... I was angry. Often angry. Uh, my emotions are... in check. I can... I feel things, but I can control them, I think. Hmm. He scratches his chin, is making some notes on it. Well, that's good. That shows us that uh, the cure should be taking effect here. Uh, I will tell you, um, we did check some scans. I know we had talked about it before. There was quite a bit of neural degradation from extended exposure to Benar. Now, it's not getting any worse from what we can tell, but I don't know that it's getting any better right now. Um, so I just want to be honest with you about that, but what's most important is that you are feeling better. You know, I want to continue doing some tests, make sure I can clear you. Um, I don't want to keep you against your will, of course, but I do want to make sure that you're you're not going to suffer any re-exposure to that element and that you're you're functioning efficiently. Is that suitable for you? Do I have permission to continue running these tests? Uh, yes, I, I'm pretty tired anyway, Doctor. Um, can you just answer a few questions for me? I don't remember... I remember I just passed out or something. I'd, uh, well, what about uh, the planet? When can I go back down? Well, that's a tougher question to answer, but I will try to get a better answer for you whenever I speak with the captain, um, the commander. Um, we did disperse the, the cure among your people. If it works on you, then by common understanding it should work on them as well, but we haven't had a chance to contact the planet or observe it just yet. But I will try to get a better answer for you when I know. Oh, that would, uh, that, that's wonderful. Uh, you, you are the one that made this cure, then? Well, there was much work that went into it. Um, previous histories, medical, and things like that. I had a lot of experience to draw from, uh, but it was developed on the ship. Uh, I did have a hand in it, I suppose. I, I never thought I would be this grateful for a human. I, I do thank you. Maybe I was rash in my statements earlier. Well, in all fairness, rashness is a a thing that many people suffer from. It is, it is no bother, though. It is fine. You were not in your right frame of mind, either. I hold nothing against you. Hmm. She leans back and puts her head down and nods, closing her eyes, and is asleep fairly quickly afterwards. And um, as that occurs a few moments later, um, I just rogue back on the... Not in the Discord. Not in the Discord. Um, give me a second or two here. Um, at this point, um, wherever you are, you hear over the intercoms, Commander Verma uh, requesting um, everyone come to... Uh, I suppose, uh, where, where are you summoning them, Zypher? Uh, to the conference room. Okay. I think that's the best place. Yeah, to the conference room. Yeah, Kaiser would hear it and notate it. He would check uh, Tyrell's vitals one more time and then um, uh, go ahead and set up some times where he might, if she's not awake at certain times, he might wake her up and get her to take in a meal. He's not sure if she's eaten very well since she's been on, so he's going to set up a few things for that nutritionally, and then we'll um, leave a timer for himself as a reminder um, somewhere on his person, and then he will go ahead and head up to Burma's summons. Yeah, you probably, she's probably on some sort of, uh, like a drip, right? Uh, some sort of 
um, liquid food, so to speak. Um, let's see if we can wait until Rogue gets back on here. I guess he's just... Well, he's back in the world 20, so... Mm -hmm. Maybe Discord's just being... Stored. I bet it's updating or something. Probably. Is perfect timing. You there, bro? That was that was quick. <laughs> you there, bro? White people neighborhoods. Whoa! Oh, what's going on? Mike. <laughs> Turns right, out the only way he could get connected back was to connect to the Atlantis uh, Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> He's underwater. You're underwater, Rogue. You sound like you're in a shark tank. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> this is amazing. Tanta Dusty. That truly does Imagine. sound like he's underwater, doesn't he? Imagine hanging out with Aquaman on July oh, 3rd. <laughs> right, bef right before 4th of July. Shooting underwater fireworks. Call Drogo! Save me! Can you hear me? Yes, you sound much yeah, better. You. Okay. You're on land again. They let him come up for air. God, sorry about that. No, you're Atlanta's fine. Atlanta's okay. tech support is outrageously good. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you have all been just summoned to um, Verma's conference room, and uh, you've all made your way there. Verma sits at his customary seat and take it away safer. Please, take a seat. Tala sits down, um, probably in her usual scene, folds her hands, looking towards Verma. I would say Hi. very mint. No one has ever been in here before. You're not high enough rank to ever even come into this room. Mm hmm. I kind of swore we had a meeting in here, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, did you? Okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Lieutenant Quig will uh, uh, look around the room as well. Uh, still impressed with being in here at the same time. Even if it is the second time, uh, he'll look around and, and nod to Commander Verba. Sit down. Yeah, uh, Dr. Kaiser comes in with a... Um... A thermal he's picked up full of uh, coffee and uh, or whatever equivalent stimulant no mo no energy drinks and will sit at the uh, table just in a, in whatever spot nowhere in particular with his um um his data pads full of notes and things like that in case there's anything that comes up about medical I called you all here today to get a chance to take a breath I know last time we were here we were planning our next steps and since then things have not really gone our way well things have not really gone our way since the attack I have read your cursory reports of what happened on plant side and it is customary for a Starfleet officers like yourselves to look first inward and assert some sort of blame for not having performed well enough, for not having reacted fast enough, for not having decided quick enough. I am ordering the three of you to stop that right here and right now. Thank you. 
the situation we are facing you cannot be trained for it you cannot be ready for it that is not the intent and purpose of starfleet it's not the intent and purpose of us being out here we are explorers these are unique set of circumstances that most in starfleet may never face in their entire careers so there are no bars or standards of reaction time decision time none of that if we are to get back home the first thing we need to do is cast doubt out of our minds cast blame i have read your service records extensively and i have selected the three of you specifically there is no one on this ship that can carry out the tasks i ask of you so i want no more recriminations self recriminations anymore there are just choices and consequences and we will face those consequences together as a crew must stop and sit back waiting for the words to kind of sink in home is far away and all around us is the emptiness of space on a usual mission something like this would excite us would Pause. Rog, you there? Yeah. Okay. Would propel us forward. Would inspire us. But now it's different. I want you to think of home, somewhere on Earth that you hold dear, something or someone that you cherish. that is your goal ladies and gentlemen that is who you're returning to or what you're returning to or where you're returning to we have lost many we will lose no more not one single crew member that is fit and alive at this point is expendable not one single crew member will be lost before we reach earth and we will reach earth have no doubt about it the forum is open for any questions or discussions and with that we're my such back Um, Lieutenant Quick came in here, really ready to apologize to everybody. But after hearing Verma's speech, uh, totally changes his tact, and he looks more ready to go and more determined now by uh, Commander's speech. He says, uh, "Commander, what's our next step?" Desire for you there. I'd meet you myself. Well, there is the Dark Matter Nebula, the ship that Quat told us about. There is also the data that 
Sarok gave us. And Commander Verma looks at Tala when he says that. And Tala pulls out a data pad. She, um, I'm assuming she, she's probably brought a few to hand out. And she passes one to Commander Verma, to Quick, to Kaiser. And she instructs where to go. I have combed through the information so far, Commander. It looks to be, um, there's a wormhole not too far from here. According to Sarak's data, this will be able to get us home faster. It is in this nebula. And it will most likely be the quickest way for us to get back to Earth. Commander Verma looks at Tula, looks down at the compact, does a quick overview of her cliff notes. What kind of forces, gravimetric quantum, will we face while in the wormhole? Is our structural integrity up to par to travel through it? I have been running simulations, Commander. I have been boring over the data of the ship, inputting the conditions that we have now, worse conditions, seeing how it will affect the ship. I am still awaiting complete data. I do not have a full report on that. I do hope to have it soon. The only problem is uh, these are all just assumptions, guesses based on other data that I have compiled from others' works. We would need to scan the wormhole itself in order to figure out what the damage would be to the ship and if we could uh, go through it safely. Very well. It would seem that if we are to do this, we would need sensors, correct? Indeed, Commander. I am working towards fixing some of these sensor arrays fixing the warp drive, trying to repair the ship as best as we can with what we have on hand, but unfortunately there is still not much, but we are doing the best that we can. Very well. Without our sensors, we are flying blind, and if we are to enter the nebula, we would need sensors for that as well. We will also need our sensors probe operational if we are to at least get some cursory information once we get to the wormhole. So we need to make that our priority. We need to get the sensors operational to whatever extent we can. If we have to gut the ship of non-essential parts to fix the sensors, that's what we will do. Until I not... Yes, Commander. I will make this my priority. And I will assist you in this. Thank you, sir. Lieutenant Quick, I need you and your team. When he kind of pauses, whoever you can spare, Lieutenant, to find a way to get to the docking bay. Not docking bay. Uh, to get to the um, shuttle, bay? shuttle bay. Shuttle bay. Shuttle bay. Yes. Yes. To get to the shuttle bay, we need those shuttles. I know we cannot evacuate using the shuttles, but if we are to run tests, flybys near the wormhole, I would rather risk a shuttle than risk the ship. All right, Commander.
Dr. Kaiser, what is the status of the Vulcan from the planet? <clears throat> he looks at his um, notations that he brought up. Well, I spoke with her before I came up here. Her mental state is much improved. She's not aggressive. She stated that she plainly is in control of her emotion. Um, she was, of course, a bit groggy from the anesthetic and coming out of the medically induced coma that we performed, but um, she certainly is not getting any worse, but time will only tell if it is going to get better, I should say. Her emotions as of right now, I would call it a success in that regard, but I do think we should try to figure out exactly the impact that it has had on this planet to deploy the cure in such a method. Very well. I would like to speak to her. I know we have been orbiting the planet, but it's time for us to leave. The choice is hers. She can come with us and make her way to Vulcan and maybe eventually bring Vulcans here to get her people or she can go back to the planet. As for the cure, collect whatever samples you can from her. And that is all we can do for these people. If she is feeling better, then the hope is they are feeling better. But at this point, I believe my altruism for anybody that is not part of this ship and my crew is going to be diminished. Kaiser kind of folds his hands together. And the cure that we have is put into the computer's data banks and I've also kept many hard copies. Um, I would, with your permission of course, request to at least attempt to make contact with the people below, see if there's any kind of effect. Are we able to contact Sorak? I do not know. Maybe Tyrrell has a way, knows some radio frequencies that we could use. He had your comm badge, uh, Commander Verma, but all attempts to contact him on that has gone unanswered. Okay. Yes, he. I believe I gave him my comm badge. I've tried to raise him on it. It has been unanswered. I do not know if he was attacked before the antidote took its effect. I do not know. But I do understand that you're a doctor and you would like to know the welfare of your patient. You have an hour, doctor. Try to make contact. And if Tyrrell wants to go back to a planet, she's welcome to. But we are leaving for the nebula in the hour. Mm, Kaiser nods and, well, I will do what I can to get what information I can. Um, as far as Tyrrell, she is recovering now. She is resting. But she is clear of any quarantine. She is in the medical bay. If you wish to speak with your commander, I can either send her up or you're welcome to come there, of course. I will come down to the medical bay shortly. I would like to see the others. Just just make sure they're, they're doing well. Keep everybody's spirits up if possible. Take eyes and nods. And then I will... Get word to Nurse Davidson. She should be coming back from a break here soon, um, at some point. And uh, I will try to get into contact with Sirak, his planet side. Very well. Dismissed. Okay. Everyone heads off uh, to uh, continue their duties. Let's go down to the medical bay. Once again. Uh, Lieutenant Kaiser, what would you like to do? I would try to... to raise Ciroc on the comm badge. Um, failing that... I'm not sure how extreme I'm going to get. Um, I might talk to Terrell, see if she has any other means of contacting him, but I may... 
I may uh, take a first hand look to see. Any attempt to race him on the com badge um, is unsuccessful. Uh, you can tell that uh, it definitely goes through. Um, so the other end is open. The com badge is not destroyed. And if you give me a sensor's roll, uh, you could locate it. And this would only be a difficulty two, even with the sensors in bad shape because of the um, because it's just it's kind of tied to the to the um, ship, right? So uh, this would be a um, engineering or science, and I would say daring. Okay, I'll do science. Staring. And then two. And you have momentum in the pool, by the way. Nah. Nice. Okay. Um, let me... That's for you. As he rubs his chin, <sighs> Kaiser is going to seek out Lieutenant Quick. Actually, uh, you can contact him via the comm. Yeah, I would. I would contact him on comm. Kind of tap comm badge. Lieutenant Quick, would you uh, mind meeting me? Dr. Kaiser. Ah, uh, no problem. I'm on my way. Is okay. everything okay? I'll talk with you more when you get here. And he, Dr. Kaiser is going to be at his desk um, in the office. So, quick comes as fast as possible. <laughs> so you head to the office there. Um, down where uh, Lieutenant Kaiser is. I'll just move you down there quickly. Um, and Kaiser's, uh, go ahead. Yeah, so Kaiser's sitting there rubbing his chin, looking at the location on his screen. Thank you for coming down. I have uh, a question for you. He stands up and straightens his suit. We have an hour, less than that now, before we depart this planet. Now, I understand Commander Verma's stance, and I respect it. He wants to make sure we're all safe and that nothing goes wrong. But there were a lot of us that died here today. Or within the last few days, trying to trying to salvage this situation as best we can. If we leave this planet without knowing what we could have done, I feel that their deaths are in vain. The reason I'm telling you this is because I've been trying to locate Sorak so I can get an idea of if anything that was done is working. He hasn't responded. And when I looked up to see where his comm badge was, it was given to him by Commander Verma. It is in the caves where Lieutenant Cantrell supposedly died. I have to be honest, I've been worried about that as well. I feel... I don't feel right 
about just leaving Cantrell behind, not knowing for sure what I mean. But, uh, I'll do what I can to help. What I'm proposing will probably get us in a bit of corrective action. Not something that I like to be involved in, but I think that you and I should go down there, transport it down, see if we can find Sirak, see if we can find Kentro. That sounds good. We don't breathe a word of it. In and out, quick. We should be able to get... Oh God, what was the name of the transporter officer? Uh, O'Connor. O'Connor. We should be able to get O'Connor on board with it. I'm sure she's feeling the same way. But if the commander finds out he's well, he's going to be majorly PO'd. We need to try to keep it under wraps if we can. Uh, you can tell he's... Obviously, uh, kind of worried about the task, specifically not telling. He says, are you sure he wouldn't allow such a mission? We could certainly not propose it to him, but he's already explained that the loss of life on this has upset him altruism is running thin for people outside of this place I know it's well it doesn't strike me immediately as a star fleet way but I can certainly see where he's coming from we've lost a lot of people on two separate ships in fact maybe it is better to tell him but if he denies it we won't have a chance to try to... We may not have a chance to try to save Kentro. If she's still even alive. You see him, he leans up against the wall and... and takes a deep... I would feel better trying to commit her on this. I feel like I failed enough. You're, I mean, you're cutting out just a little bit there. Yeah, you're cutting out. I feel like I've failed. You know what I mean? I would feel better with Vermont. But... Very well. Lieutenant Kaiser taps his um, combat. Commander Verma, is this Lieutenant Kaiser? Yes, Doctor, go ahead. Commander... I have not been able to raise Ciroc uh, with the comp badge. I ran some scans to see if I could pick up any information on where it is. Um, it is located in the caves where Lieutenant Cantrell is thought to be deceased. I was speaking with Lieutenant Quick and we both think that we should attempt a brief away mission with your permission. What will this mission achieve, Dr. Kaiser? I do not understand. We have no certain confirmation that Lieutenant Cantrell was killed first. Second, I do not wish for everything we've done here and the sacrifices have been made to be in vain. There should be some measure of finality to understanding if the cure that we employed has had an effect on these people. And if it has not, I will lose my doctor in the process? No. At the first sign of trouble, I would have O'Connor beam us up immediately. Did he run scans on the location where the communicator 
was found or left? Is there any bioscience in that area? Yeah, the um, the sensors would have, um, you know, been sweeping for that sort of thing too. The reason he's able to pick up the comm link because it's directly connected to the ship as usual in the atmosphere. Um, bioscience, there's too much uh, damage in the caves because these are the caves that were bombed and collapsed um, mm -hmm. partially in areas. Uh, it's you can't see any bioscience there. There are bioscience. There's in the area, but in those specific caves, you can't really tell. Dr. When I left those caves, the Vulcans were bombing it back to whatever they refer as the Stone Age. You could very well transport yourself into the middle of a rock formation. I would make appropriate scans to make sure we're transporting into a decent space, not somewhere that would just scramble us. denied. I cannot afford to lose my doctor. If Sarok is, does not have the comm badge, then he does not have the comm badge. We did what we can. If you want, you can send Teril down there with the comm badge if she wants to go back to the planet. And she can possibly communicate with you from the comm badge. She has an hour. But nobody is going off this ship. Understood, Commander. Kaiser out. Thanks to the combat. And shakes his head and stands up. Well, Cricket takes a deep breath and looks at him sideways for a minute. What do you think? I intend to do as the command orders. I will send Turil down. If that does not work, then I'm going. And he gets up from behind his desk and goes over to talk with Turil. Turil at this point is awake. Um, Nurse Davidson here brought her actually some uh, real food from the replicator, um, and she's eating it. Um, she sees Kaiser as he walks in and she looks up this is not bad and it's some sort of Vulcan meal well I suppose not bad is better than bad and he will pull a seat over and uh, well still feeling the same way any issues I mean, I feel better physically, less groggy. Uh, the same, uh, just trying to get my bearings, I suppose, as far as uh, my uh, emotions. Kaiser nods, and he's going to look over the vitals, and I'm just going to check over your vitals, and then I want to speak with you about something. He looks through and checks the scanners. Yeah, they all seem... Uh, about the same as they were before. More activity in the neural um, neural pathways, um, which is a good sign. Sweet nods. And now, Tyrell, I know that you expressed a desire to go back to the planet. Is that still what you wish to do? Uh, yes, I want to check on my friends, and I don't know. Uh, I think I heard you talking to my grandfather, Sarok. Yes, he was on board. He was actually part of the reason we discovered this cure. It was looking at his genetics. Um, good, well, good. Well, I'm trying to determine to make sure the cure had the same effect 
on all of your people down planet side as it did to you. For you, we were able to apply it here directly to control the environment to make sure it was dispersed as it should have been. Um, we had to be a bit more creative, so to speak, to disperse it among your people on the planet surface below. It, uh, we've been trying to speak with Sirak since he went back down and he hasn't responded to any of our, our messages. He's not been using the comm badge that was given to the communicator we use it to communicate between ourselves. He's not been using it to get back to us and we've tried for several hours since he's been sent back. I, I don't know what's happening. Oh, then send me. I, I'll go now. She sits the tray down next to her on the little table and begins to stand up, pulling all the um, uh, all the attached cords and stuff off of her skin. And... Ooh, careful, careful. And he starts pulling some of them off. Okay, all right. Well, your vitals look fine. Um, let me... Find a spare com badge for you, and he kind of looks around. And I'm sure there are plenty. Yeah, I'm most sure. of our medical staff <laughs> are dead. Yeah, um, and he finds the spare. Here you are. And you just tap it, and it begins to broadcast. There, you can. We'll be able to pick it up. So, I will try to reach out to you whenever you get planet side. I'll give you a bit of time, and then I just want to know how everything looks, if people are still imbalanced, if there's any issues, if, if they are, appear to be well. I just want to hear a report from Planet Side. Um, is any questions, concerns, anything you want to go over before I send you back? Uh, where is my pistol? Oh, he looks around. I probably had it confiscated yeah. somewhere, right? Yeah, it's. It could be in here somewhere. That's fine. Yeah, he reaches through like a security drawer that he unlocks and spares her belongings and hands it over to you. There you are. She nods and probably uh, uh, puts on her clothes. Uh, she's probably in a gown currently takes the pistol, puts it in her holster, she stands there and rolls her shoulder and she says alright, how do I get back? Alright, I will lead you to the transporter room and kind of walk you through what we need to do on that accord. I believe that the commander wished to speak with you as well before you departed and I will Send for him to let him know the, the plan. Uh, out of character, has Verma already spoke whether or not? Mm -mm, no. Okay. And, um, Kaiser will hit his combat combat agent. Uh, Commander Verma, this is uh, Doctor Kaiser. Yes, Doctor. Uh, Teril is ready to go back planet side. She has a clean bill of health for the most part here. No lingering concerns. I understand you want to speak with her before she left. Uh, I am preparing to walk her to the transport room if you wish to meet us there. Well, if... I just wanted to see if she wanted to go, but since she is comfortable going back to her people, then I have nothing more to say to her. Just wish her well. Understood. And, uh... Kaiser will be this combat. Never mind. He simply wishes to wish you well on your return journey. I will take you to the transporter room and we will get you sit down. You take her to the transporter pad and uh, she steps onto the pad ready to go. O'Connor looking at both of you expectantly. And, uh, so Kaiser looks at Trill now. It feels a bit strange. I'm sure you remember the sensation from when we brought you up. But just be calm. Uh, O'Connor knows what she's doing. She'll get you exactly where you need to go. And um, I guess I would, I would put her at a, a, a safe-ish distance, but close enough for her to be able to get to her people. Mm -hmm. um, I guess a similar area where we met her, since she would know them there. Yeah. Um, and then he would give the energize command and have O'Connor 
beaver dam. She disappears, and as Lieutenant Kaiser watches her form um, dissipate, um, Lieutenant Quick and, and Tala, uh, where are you guys going to meet to talk? Um, Tala would uh, ask Quick to meet her in the astrogations lab since she's the only one there. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. Um, Quick will make sure that his team that he's assembled, probably a team of four, uh, is working on. Yeah, they're, they're beginning to get the supplies they need. It's a mix of engineering and security li uh, led by Caval, and they're starting to uh, get ready to do... Um, uh, to try to get to the uh, shuttle bay. Yeah. But... Sorry, you cut out there. So Quick would stop by and visit Tala on the way. Tala's just running some last minute uh, trials just with some data that she's extrapolated from other wormholes before she goes to work on um, the sensors. But uh, this quick stops by, she um, she stands up and makes her way over to one of the seats and takes a seat looking at quick. I know we did not get to speak very much during the uh, chaos that ensued during the mission. It did seem like you wanted to. I... I did. I did want to talk to you. I had been feeling... pretty terrible about my actions, and... I just wanted to tell you, you did a great job, and I did not. <laughs> and he kind of laughs it off, and uh, he, he, you can see his uh, posture kind of eases up a little bit as he does this. Mm, Tala looks at Lieutenant Quick very serious. Quick. You did the best that you could with what was going on, as did we all. There was much on the line. There was very little room for error, but unfortunately things do not run like the simulations. Nothing ever goes perfectly. And as the commander said, if we continue to berate ourselves and take ourselves down whenever there is a failure, then no matter what, there will always be something that we can pick at, something that we can pinpoint that we did wrong. We will always have this feeling of failure. What you did was not failure quick. The failure would have been giving up and turning tail, but you did not do that. You fought until you could not. And I see that is very admirable. You can tell it definitely makes him feel better, and he, he stands up straighter and looks towards the screens. And he says, uh, well, thank you very much. It, it helped for um, Commander Verma to say what he did. Uh, even though for a minute there I thought he was going to call me out, uh, it, it did help change my perspective on things. Uh, there's no time for me to be worried about this. And uh, 
I'll uh, continue to do as as good as I can. And uh, thank you very much for taking time to speak. With of course, um, there's not many people that I can speak with about matters such as this. Um, the one who I did, he died, unfortunately. So to speak on matters such as this uh, with you quick is um, mutually beneficial, I think. Crick smiles and t tilts his head to the side. Good then. Well, yeah, if there's ever anything bothering you, oh. ten forward. She nods. There are, of course, many things bothering me quick, but uh, as you say, we don't have very much time. All we can do is press on and get the ship fixed so we can all go home. Yes. Um. That would be nice. We better uh, get back to that then. Of course, I need to start fixing the sensor arrays, and if I can catch the commander without, uh, well, he's not busy, that would be good. Um, <laughs> as you are, and still. So, make her way to the exit. He nods and takes a few steps backwards and he says, talk to you soon, Tala. Of course, quick. Um, at about that point, uh, Commander Verma, uh, what are you doing? Um, Commander Verma would it be you know, walking back um, from the bridge down towards the astrogation uh, uh, department. Mm -hmm. So as you get to the doors outside, um, they open uh, right before you would expect them to, and you see uh, Lieutenant Quick leaving the astrogation lab. Commander Irma looks at Lieutenant Quick. Lieutenant? Ah, uh, excuse me, Commander. Uh, hey, uh, I just wanted to say uh, thank you very much for your words. They were inspiring to me. And um, I have great respect for you, sir. Thank you, Lieutenant. Um, uh, I'm just on my way to finish the, the task you assign me to uh, uh pardon me sir and and see he nods and puts his hands behind his back starts to walk off down the hallway commander verma just before he enters the room he kind of stays there it's not often no it's a new phrase it has been some time since anyone has said those words to him it takes a moment to process, nods, and then enters the astrogation uh, room. Quick passes uh, Verma and heads to take care of the task that he's been given. Verma, you see Tala at the um, monitors um, running multiple simulations and mathematical equations all at the same time uh, busy at work um, extrapolating data from the uh, dark matter nebula and the data that she received from Sirach uh, to allow you hear um, the conversation behind you uh, giving you advance notice that Burma has arrived 
Verma walks in and then clears his throat. <clears throat> Lieutenant? And she finishes up um, pressing some buttons and she turns her head and turns her shoulders towards the commander. I'm dressing up. Commander. Before we begin, I never got to formally apologize for my decisions on the bridge when we were attacked by the Borg. I could not see any other way. And I wish I did not have to do what I did. Tala nods, still looking at the commander. Her eyes kind of trail towards the side, towards the left. I understand the decision that you made, sir. I understand it was for the greater good of the crew. I do not know what destruction she could have caused in that form. More could have died if she stayed. More could have died if you respected the words that you had given me before I went into that room. I fully understand the ramifications that could have happened if you did. I appreciate for the crew what your actions had accomplished. But of course there is she pauses looking down. I am unsure how to process the death of my mother. I know that normally in grief my people get together and hmm. in words um, not quite comfort it's more understanding unfortunately I do not have that so it is difficult for me to think about Under normal circumstances, the ship would have a counselor to guide you through these difficult times. Dr. Kaiser may not be a counselor, but he has some skill in this matter. When you're ready and if you want, you can always speak to him. And as always, my doors are open. Though I may not understand the customs, I will do what I can if you would want to hold a memorial service for her. But, please, as always, think about it. I can only offer options. Mm, Tala nods. I think some sort of service for all of the crew would be appropriate, giving time for not just I, but for everyone to mourn. I do not think that we have had that chance. I do not know what the effect on crew morale would be, but I think to deal with these feelings would be more appropriate than bottling them up if we have time, of course. 
Um, there's a few things that I um, did want to ask, Commander. Yes. Um, ask regards. Her. Thank you. Um, regards to some of the effects that my, uh, the captain left behind. I would request, if possible, um, for them. It is. She kind of pauses, looking up. I do not have much from her. Say no more, Lieutenant. The ready room on the bridge will be accessible to you, and so will the captain's quarters. I did not want to disturb anything in those places out of respect, but feel free to go to her quarters whenever you wish, and I will make the ready room available to you at certain times, and you're free to take whatever personal effects out of there that you wish. Thank you, Commander. It is much appreciated, but I do think that once I have inspected the ready room and the quarters, I do think that you should assume it. I do understand keeping some sort of almost a memorial, but you have led the crew to your best ability, and if you had not been in command, I do not know where we would be now. There is, of course, the respect that you hold for my mother, but I also think that you deserve that space as well. Commander Verma, you can kind of, uh, you will you hear it like, like uh, his breath kind of exhaling. You could see that there was a tension in his shoulder and about him that seems to have relaxed as if a, a small portion of a burden was, rele- was relieved. Thank you, Lieutenant. It it means a lot. Mm, so, uh, again, nods and looks to the commander. Also, um, please do not take this as an offense. It is more of a personal um, preference and I do hope that it does not affect your decision making in the future I do understand that I am one of the more experienced engineers on the ship one of the more experienced scientists in regards to astrogation one of the only ones remaining But I do request to not be treated with special care or difference from the rest of the crew. Almost a, not quite ostracized, but in a way protected. It is, there is a discomfort for me to not be treated as the rest of the crew. I apologize. That was not my intention when I ordered you to stay off the planet. I was just not prepared to lose not just the captain but her daughter as well. But your point is noted. You are no different from anybody else in the crew. Your importance is no different from anybody else in the crew. I will not... I will treat you like everybody else. 
Thank you, Commander. This, for me, means a lot. Commander Verma nods and feels that some, some sort of at least some sort of meeting of minds has occurred very well. Let us let us see what Sarok's data can provide us. Maybe, just maybe, uh, this wormhole can take us back. I believe it can. Commander, I do not want to um what is the human saying? Um, hedge our bets. Um, but I do believe this is the best way to return home. I, of course, do not have full confidence. But with the data that we are running, with the likelihood of survivability, this is the best way. And I will make sure to do my best as with the rest of the crew to get us home. All right. Um, Ted, what um, what is the distance between where we are right now, orbiting this planet to the wormhole? Um, it would be um, at your max like at your long? current maximum warp. Um, probably close to a week okay so commander verma as mr tala tells tells him that yeah it's agreed he looks at the information again and looks at the star charts that's up on the screen well that should be a week's worth of travel at maximum warp that should give us enough time to put forth options of approaching this wormhole give us enough time to maybe recover some functionality of our sensors yes this definitely looks promising we have a week let's make the best use of it let's come up with plans and maybe fallbacks on what we can do to get to this wormhole navigating that nebula and then plans to get sensor data and chart a course through that wormhole. Yes, Commander. I will start teams on fixing the sensor arrays. I will work toward charting out the nebula. Um, she looks down again. May I recommend that we prepare a few sensor probes I think we should approach this with some caution. When we get to the nebula before we enter it, we can launch a few probes, match actual readings versus our theoretical predictions. And if they seem in accordance, we should enter the nebula. We can do that at impulse and take it step by step. Once we get to the wormhole, we shall launch some more sensor probes and try and get some readings from within it. The gravimetric forces, if there are any quantum fluctuations, if there are any shearing effects. I also suggest maybe if Lieutenant Quick can get to the shuttle bay, we prep one of our shuttles for remote access, pilot it remotely from the bridge, slap it on with some more sensors and send it through the wormhole. That is a... That is a good idea, Commander. I think that'll provide the most sensor data with the most safety to make sure that we are not mm, walking into destruction or flying into it. I will, we will um, work towards um, getting those probes um, 
completed getting them fixed and she looks to the commander again I thank you for putting this much faith in me you don't need to thank me lieutenant we are fortunate to have you on board keep that in mind it's the other way around I must be thankful to whatever forces are in play that have all these people on this ship at this moment. And as you say that, I turn back to the monitors to begin your tasks. And... Yes. Hmm? Just mechanically, um, I just try, instead of doing like too many extended uh, tasks. I was kind of like trying to break up that whole thing into smaller tasks. Yep, that yep, you can yeah, yeah, it's all good. We'll, we'll get get okay. to the. I'm just trying to get through scene by scene by scene to get you cool. know. Cool. Um, so as as you do that, um, the scene switches back to Kaiser sitting uh, at his desk, waiting to hear from Tyrrell, and it doesn't take long until he actually does. You hear from Trill, she cuts in. I, I'm next to the mountains. I am, there's just caverns, there's a lot of damage here, collapse. Ah, I don't see anything quite yet. Mm, understood. Be careful. Again, if there's any danger, we can pull you back and put you someplace safe, er, if you wish to remain, but please approach it carefully, Tyrell. She is a pause. What's, what's that? I'm, I'm going in. And uh, the comm is still open. She's either forgot to take it off or, or to turn it off or... Um, is doing it on purpose, you're not sure. You hear an echo in voice. What we have experienced here today has come down from the time of the beginning without change. This is the Vulcan heart. This is the Vulcan soul. This is our way. A new way. And the scene shows a partially collapsed chamber with many Vulcans standing around a circular um, stone, almost an altar. There are shrines built. This, the camera turns and pans on what's at the altar and there's a image of Lieutenant Cantrell lying on her back looking up, her eyes closed, her body covered in a shroud of red, Sirach standing next to her body, looking around and speaking. As it was the time of the beginning, so it is now. He picks up this mallet there's a large hexagonal gong above her hanging he hits it and there's a ring he hits it again and there's another ring and again five times in total he takes a deep breath it is done let her sacrifice that brought us together purify this place for a new generation. He steps back and the rest that are surrounding him nod their heads. Tyrell calls out into the comlink, 
What? This is... I've never seen anything like this before. Did you hear that? I did. How do they... How do they all seem very even? Uh, they... I know some of these people I have almost killed some of them before. They're commemorating the dead. It's your colleague. I, is she human? I, I don't know what that... No, she's... Uh, I believe it's a human woman. Blonde hair. Mm. Mm. Kind of swallows deeply. And it seems as though all is well to real. If you feel comfortable, would you would you approach Sirak if I could perhaps speak with him? Of course. And there's a moment of silence that she you can tell she's probably climbing down. You can tell she grunts a few times from exertion and you hear Granddaughter, what are you doing here? You should be in the stars flying far away. Uh they they wanted to speak to you. Why haven't you been answering their hails? So they would leave with you, and that you would not come back. Uh, uh, oh. Uh, please talk to them. Uh, he takes the comm link. Yes, this is Sirak. Sirak, it sounds as though all is going better now. Yes, we have a long way to go, but... For now, most everyone has been cured, I suppose. There are a few that have... Well, they will never embrace logic or anything near it. But they are not fanatics and... Well... I suppose one day we may be whole again. But I think this is as best we can hope for for now. I understand. We will bring word back to Vulcan. Let them know you are here. Perhaps we can... They will send others to aid you, to bring you back into the fold. I'm not sure anyone would want that, Doctor. We found peace for the first time in generations. To go back to Vulcan or have them come here? No. I don't think that's wise. I would ask you, delete any memory of this place. Your cure, what's happened here, everything. So that your people and organization don't lead the Vulcans back. That's what I ask. And Kaiser thinks on it. We have other tasks we must attend to on our own here. I will... I will do what I can to keep it a secret if you wish, Sirak. That is, after all, our, our purpose, not to, not to disturb unless one is ready to join the galactic community. I thank you for this, Doctor. You've saved hundreds, if not thousands, of lives. You and your captain, and Terrell. Puts a hand on her shoulder. Not that you see it, but... Will you go with them? He says to her. And you're not sure what happens, but he sighs. She will be staying, it looks like. I would make one last request of you, Sirak. What is it? Lieutenant Cantrell has family. I would beg that you allow her to be returned to us. 
that we might commemorate her sacrifice. Oh, of course. I was under the impression you had already gone, so we gave her a funeral rite. I suppose it is good fortune that one would get two. We will bring her out of the caves, and I will place this calm link on her chest. And she can be returned to her crew for one last trip through the stars. You have my thanks, Surak. May peace be with you and yours. Live long and prosper, Doctor. And, uh, Kaiser will um, rub his eyes a bit and uh, turn off the comm pad and then um, he, uh, Nurse Davidson. Yes? Um, prepare a um, he is just thinking about it. His head is hurting from all the stress. Um, prepare a, something to transport a, a corpse with properly from the transporter room where Lieutenant Kentrell's body was located. Oh, I, I will, uh, I'll get on that right away, Doctor. And she walks out and there's a joining room to the sick bay, which you know is uh, the morgue. Which is extremely get full. And, yeah, he'll get up and... Knowing that she might need help finding a spare one is actually going to go in there himself and walk with her down whenever, she, whenever they find one to transport it. And, and he gets his compad. Uh, Commander Verma? Yes, Doctor. I wish to discuss something with you when you're able. Um, very well, I'll be down to sick bay shortly. Thank you, Commander. It doesn't take long for um, Verma to get to the sick bay um, from the astrogation lab. Um, sorry, I'm just whipping you guys around. Okay. Doctor? Commander, thank you for coming down. I apologize if I pulled you away from anything. Not at all. I was anyway intending to come down here and just make sure those who are healing are in good spirits. Oh, thank you, Commander. It's, it's, it's... Please have a seat, sir. Commander Verma takes a seat opposite the doctor. I had a few things I wanted to talk with you about some developments. First, I am happy to be able, and I will do an official report for you, of course, but I'm happy to give you advanced news that the cure did work. I did confirm it with Turil. Um, they are, for the most part, all of them, coming back into emotional control. I have no words, Doctor. He, you were able to cure an epidemic while everything else was falling apart around you. Well, it was in no small part due to the contributions of many, but I appreciate it. There's a second matter with that, and then a third matter that I wish to go over with. The second one is, I did speak with Sirak. He is... He did not respond to our communications because he was hoping we would just leave with Turil and take her away from this place, but I did speak with him. Um, I mentioned that we would contact Vulcan, thinking he would be happy to perhaps be included again with the rest of Vulcan race. But he stated that he would rather oppositely allow this place to develop all on its own. He doesn't wish to be returned to the galactic community. 
I told him that I would honor that, but I wanted to run it by you. I mean, it's, it is, we did interfere in a, in a sense, but perhaps this is a, another way of non-interference. He kind of shrugs and looks to Verma for a response. Verma puts his, kind of, kind of tilts his head down a little and you can see that he's in deep thought. Yes, I agree, Doctor. We did interfere in their lives. We did change, well, alter the course of their history on that planet. They may be Vulcans, but they have been away from their home for so long that one could always argue that they are an indigenous species to this planet now. I can almost... <laughs> I do envy the Vulcan species a bit. They now have a second opportunity to grow as a civilization. Maybe they will pick a different trajectory than what Vulcan Prime did. Who knows? It's not very often a species gets that opportunity. Do you not think so, Doctor? I agree. It's... He... He also asked me to destroy evidence of the cure. I... kind of rubs his hands together. No. Let us do something different with that, Dr. Kaiser. I... It is... It is easy for him to say that because for him it is just a cure. For him it is no different than taking a hypo spray to cure an allergic reaction to mud worms. No. But at the same time, we have to protect their privacy and their wishes. Am I not mistaken, Doctor, um, in, the, in my thoughts that all doctors and staff leads do have medical conferences where they propose theoretical papers and discuss such matters? That is something that takes place from time to time, yes, sir. Very well. Put it down as a theory. Call it the Kaiser Theory. I think it has a good name to it. Destroy all of the live samples. Collect all the data that you can. Enough such that anybody else in the future, anybody in Starfleet or the Vulcan High Command or the Science Directorate, could recreate what you have done with ease because you have put in the hard work. Write it as a theoretical paper with all the data necessary and we shall share it to the community. It doesn't have to be that it was tested on live subjects, that part can be omitted, but everything else is true, is it not? And Kaiser stresses his chin and it is a fair point. I will likely have some time as we're going along here to begin work on such a paper or leave time, I imagine, when we get back. Yes, I think that's an agreeable middle ground for this protects their privacy but allows this information to get out as it should yes and Dr. Kaiser I want you I want your name on that paper I do not want any of this modesty this is groundbreaking work and I understand that these are not times for commendations or awards or 
applause or adulations. It is nonetheless deserved. I do not know for how long we are going to be out here, and this might become our new normal. But our new normal should have some semblance of normality. We will rejoice in each other's successes and share each other's failures. Kaiser nods. As you say, Commander, it will be done. Um, there is one more matter, but this one I think I should show you instead. And he gets up and motions to the, the door. Commander Verma follows him. As they're walking to the morgue, he is talking to Verma. Tyrell walked upon a burial ceremony of sorts, a commemoration of life that the Vulcans were performing. It was not for one of their own. He will go over to the mortuary bag that contains um, Lieutenant Cantrell. We have confirmation now, at least. You will see Commander Verma's face kind of Harden, it's as if got instantly chiseled out of stone. There's sadness. Place her with the others. Lieutenant Tala made a good point earlier today as I said about making this new normal viable then it must be normal for us to he pauses remember our dead We shall hold a memorial service for everyone who didn't make it. We will try to get their bodies back home. Commander Verma stands there, looks at Lieutenant Cantrell's face. She seems at peace. Yes, I, I don't think that she felt it, thankfully. He looks over. Well, it's plenty of time to be sentimental. He zip up the bag again. That is all I wish to go over with you, Commander. If you have any more need for me, I will be down here tending to uh, those wounded. But these medical bay should be clearing up in short order. There's not much left as far as serious wounds. That's good news. That is good news. As always, excellent work, Doctor. I will be back on the bridge. If you need me, you know where to get me. Of course, Commander. And thank you for taking control of a difficult situation, sir. Commander Verma nods. And as you continue the work of the day, as you're about to prepare to leave, you get at one more message from Trill. And this is the coordinates uh, very near the ship. And she indicates that they were able to disconnect what you were looking for to get you the parts and the salvage from the ancient ship and De Connor beams up these um, these components to the various departments where they're the most useful and it looks as though Kaiser's plea to return to the surface has netted 
something after all besides a um, closure and I've uh, reduced the breaches on the sensors and the structure by one as they are put in place the uh, next week passes and uh, tasks are performed let's uh, do just a few rolls here uh, just to get them out of the way um, quick would you please give me a uh, engineering and fitness roll please difficulty one There's two momentum in the pool if you would like mm. to use it. Who was that for? Was, uh, that was for quick. There's one momentum in the pool, actually. One got used somewhere. Nice. Um, so, Lieutenant Quick, describe how your you and your team are able to clear out. Uh, one of the the hangers um, to access your runabout. Are we, uh, sorry. So, are we getting rid of uh, this stuff into space? Uh, if you want, just the the random junk in the way. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So the crew is um uh, is busy. Uh, uh, anything that we can salvage, anything that we can use for parts, uh, we would be breaking down. Uh, and they're efficient in doing their duties and uh, jettisoning anything else out of into space to our working. Yeah, eventually, uh, Quick and his team is able to get to the shuttles giving you one more option for the future. Um, in the astrogation lab, Tala and Commander Verma work side by side, barely sleeping, barely eating over the next week. Um, you guys can give me... Um, Verma, I'm assuming you're assisting on this one? Um, so this is what I was mm -hmm. thinking. Um, I have a... Um, focus of astro navigation because I'm a helmsman mm -hmm. um, right and basically helm operations so um, kind of using that to like navigate like so basically use the science to find the right points okay. right but then use my skills as a way to navigate through those points right um, like how best to approach it. Why don't you? Why don't um, you both so, give me a a, a roll um, on your own? Uh, difficulty okay. two um, can be either science and reason, engineering and reason. Um, I would even do con and reason. Okay. Okay. So I'll go first. Um, or insight. I would allow insight too. Okay. So these um, are separate roles for each of you. Okay. So I would like to use um, my determination. Okay. Um, so as Verma is uh, furiously working um, to find a way back home, he looks up time to time at Tala and sees her brow furrowed um, ears perked you know um, concentrating on understanding the data that Sarok has given understanding the nebula understanding the the wormhole whenever Commander Verma is taking a break he is walking through the corridors and he sees he sees the crew he sees Quick's men clearing debris he is getting reports of their progress towards the shuttle bay 
he is proud to call these people his crew he's invigorated by kaiser's achievements and he knows that out here in the inky blackness of space this is the only family that matters and with these thoughts he has gentlas plotting stuff and putting up on them he's like finding navigational points through it and he is going to do that's his determination mm-hmm. and he's going to do um reason plus uh con reason plus con reason 2d20 applicable focus yes difficulty 2 So that determination gives one. So I need yes. All right, generated a momentum. So how does how does uh, how just, does that look? One minute. So that's generated two momentums, Mm-mm. right? One because no. it's attacked. Tef- no, no, that's what I, he used the determination. determination. I think, oh, oh, so that's auto six. So yep. Two, two, so yeah. One. So that is three. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes. It would be uh, you got. Uh, four total four set four total successes yeah. so two momentum perfect yeah that is my idea to put the momentum for the last if she yep. needs it so um so as verma is like you know seeing all this happen around him um and as the last working and you know she at keep time she keeps throwing up data on the main screen that she's trying to understand commander verma remembers his his fondest memories of childhood where his grandfather the original verma who captain the starship on whose lapels kirk himself had placed the lieutenant's bars showing him star charts of those early heady days of exploration and he remembers all those old teachings and he starts seeing the way he starts seeing a path through the nebula through to the wormhole and he starts plotting a course that the last start seeing appear on the the astrogation map up there and uh for Chalas roll um I'm going to use testing a theory Uh, just because it succeeded Perfect. earlier on this so I'm rolling a 3d20 mm-hmm. and you can spend so momentum there is like three in the pool I think you know what let's do it one sec uh, there is three in the pool so if you spend one you would be rolling four I'll do that So if this succeeds, then I'll uh, subscribe. Yeah, D two. Oh my god, I'm glad. Uh, so okay, it's a success. So, Tala, um, over the next week, she's she doesn't eat too much, doesn't sleep. She spends majority of her time in the astrogation lab. Her just eyes just pouring over data, just hunched over, constantly working, moving from panel to panel, analyzing the data. Um, she barely takes a break, really only to um, go down and get food and come back up. Um, she's pouring over this information, and while she does have theoretical knowledge in astro navigation, it's only that theoretical. Verma helping her plot out the course. She's seeing it, but she's kind of also feeling that exhaustion. Um, she does spend a lot of her time pouring over the data, finding ways to make it through, collecting data. She's going to add to her report for when they return. If anything's new, discovering anything that she can use to. Of further her own uh, investigation and 
she runs multiple tests over and over again with different data, different uh, inputs, and by the end of the week, you can see she's fairly haggard, but she still maintains stoic face, um, upright posture, but she's very tired. With the help of Commander Verma, you get a very clear picture of what this could be. All the data that you know of in your data uh, banks on the ship and the new data Sorak has given you has given you a map that should get you through this wormhole, this spatial anomaly. Of course, the final test is when you get there, and there will be more to be done, but you're as prepared as you possibly could be. Um, over the next week, you prepare, um, you fix up the ship as best you can, and actually one thing you can do is you can create two breaches in two other areas to take a breach away. Um, let me just, uh, pull something out real quick for you guys. I'm trying to get as much done as possible in each session, so just bear with me. Um, if you click on the ship and click display ship breaches, that's what your current breaches look like. So say that again. What can we do? Uh, so you can um, over over the time you can actually uh, because I think it was Tala mentioned that she or maybe you mentioned that because you know uh, to get the sensors working you would take um, any parts you could from non-essential systems. So yes. I think it's cool if you want you can give two breaches either all to one thing or one to multiple to um, take one from the sensors. So you could give sensor your weapon systems up to five breaches, and the computer up to five breaches, engine up to five breaches, whatever you're thinking about doing, um, to give one less breach to sensors. And I, I did take away um, two breaches from what you got from the planet. Okay. Um, Kaiser would vote for weapons because if we get into a fight, we're dead anyway. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm just being a realist. <laughs> <laughs> if we have one, seven, nine, fourteen, seventeen, twenty-three breaches already, um, we're just <laughs> going to die if something shoots us. Yeah, we can't so. do well, structures already at five weapons. Honestly, we should. Talal will agree. We need engines to for propulsion, computers to scan and analyze. Weapons is the most logical. And so just to let you know, if you get down to sensors of one breach, you would be at impact. Um, so that only increases the difficulty by one. Um, My luck in firing will be just fun. <laughs> yeah, uh... Yeah, give it to uh, weapons. We basically at this point taken our weapon system offline if we do this, so um, so it's fine. Okay. All right. Okay, so the weapons system will have two more breaches. 
and the comms or I'm sorry the sensors have one less breach all right so that is uh, significantly better Okay. Yeah, impact is only so impact. Um, I'll just read it to you so you know. Whenever the sen sensor system suffers one or more breaches, it disrupts the function temporarily until the sensor operation officer performs restore minor action. No task can be attempted uh, which will use um, that will be assisted by the ship's sensors. Uh, further until that minor action is performed, all attacks made by the ship's uh, ship increases its difficulty by one. So what I'm going to say is that uh, um, the difficulty is just plus one right now. Okay. Um, so the question is would you like to continue on for a half an hour to 45 minutes or would you like to stop here uh, i would like to stop here okay uh, same yeah. all right um you um have made all the repairs that you're going to be able to make in the time um in the time uh, that you have uh the ship slowly uh, moves closer to this dark nebula, uh, dark matter nebula, and you begin to see it on your sensors uh, as the ship grows ever closer to a path home. So you hope. And that is it for tonight. Alright.